Hello, Gedmus here. This time it's two SCME watches, model number 1586 and 1637. Both are analog digital display watches and use a new approach. Each watch is powered by a single time module instead of two separated analog and digital movements. You can get one for around 12-16 US dollars. The watches look quite close. Obviously, the design is taken from a G-Shock Modmaster line watches. Skme watches just have small second hands. Both are huge watches, being at 56 mm in diameter. Skme 1586 visually looks smaller, but in fact is just half millimeter difference in case size compared with 1637. The thicknesses are 19 and 20 mm accordingly. Skme 1586 is slightly lighter, weighing 68 grams, while 1637 weights 78 grams. The materials are common for this type of watches. Plastic case, resin crystal, stainless steel back cover and a rubber band. Well, these are very big watches. Check how they look on my 17.5 cm size wrist. Would fit a larger wrist better. The dials look rather close, yet the placements of the second-hand subdials and digital LCDs differ. They are placed vice versa, at 12 and 6 o'clock positions accordingly. The dial of 1637 is larger. The hands and the hour numerals of the SME 1637 are also more massive. That's why optically it looks larger than 1586, but the cases are almost identical in size. The finish level of the dial elements is mediocre. Yet can't mention any bigger flaws. The analog time is well readable on both watches, while the negative LCDs aren't so well readable. Not a big surprise for an inverted LCD. Another thing, the massive hands occasionally block the LCD, making it hard or impossible to read. Plastic cases are pretty common for this type of SME watches. They are well made. The back covers are also common. SME 1586 watch case has a jeans-like texture. It nicely matches with the same textured band. Both watches have four buttons and a decorative fifth button instead of the crown. Day 10. Oops, it even can be taken out. Oh yes, 1586 has one more button on the front. It's a duplicated light button. The analog and digital times are set separately. I mean, if the digital time is adjusted, the analog time doesn't change automatically. To enter the time adjustment mode, press and hold the reset button until the seconds begin to flash. Use the reset button to scroll between seconds, hours, minutes, 12, 24 hour format. Use the mode button to advance values. As you can see, after setting the digital time, the analog time doesn't change. That means that the digital and analog times aren't synchronized, despite the fact that the watch uses a single movement. The analog time is controlled using the start button. Three pushes of the button advance the time for one minute, or you can press and hold the button to adjust it quickly. Press the button again to stop the time. But there is no way to turn the analog time back. So, if you want to set a few minutes back, you have to advance time forward for almost 12 hours. That's awkward. Actually, it's nonsense. Even worse, as the accidental or mistaken push of the start button advances the time, and it happens quite often. It should be some kind of protection here. I'd suggest start time adjusting only after a long press of the button. And of course, there should be an availability to turn the time back. That's actually a big drawback of these watches.
Select the date mode and end adjustment mode by pressing the reset button for 2 seconds. Set the month, day and weekday. The year isn't implemented in the calendar. One more unpleasant thing is that the second hand ticking noise is rather loud. It's clearly audible at night if kept nearby. Just listen. It works on the battery type CR2025. It's widely used in watches and other electronic devices, so it won't be a problem to get one for a replacement. It should last about two years. The watch uses a single module for displaying both digital and analog times. As I mentioned before, they are synchronized. The hands are controlled using some extra gears and you can see. The set of functions is pretty basic. Besides the time and date modes, we have an alarm, second time zone and chronograph functions. Yet there are differences in controls, as the start button is used only for the analog time adjustment. In order to set the alarm or hour chime signal, press and hold the reset button until hours begin to flash. Use the reset button to scroll through the hour minute alarm chime settings and use the mode button to change the values of the selected setting. Second time zone. The adjustment control is the same as for the alarm mode. Just you set the hours, minutes and 12, 24 hour format. The stopwatch uses different and very confusing controls. We have the start and rest buttons on the right, yet you have to use only the reset button. Press it to start, stop and resume time. Press and hold this button for 2 seconds to reset the time. And as I said before, the start button is dedicated only for the analog time adjustment. I use it incorrectly many times expecting to start the stopwatch but unintentionally misadjusted the analog time instead. And why not, if the record near it says start? But Skmay designers think otherwise. The start button means adjusting the analog time. It's very confusing. I understand Skmay took the easiest route by using a regular case with the typical button records, but that's unprofessional and weird. And that's all functions. Strange there is no countdown time at mode. The wall time mode would also be very appreciated. The massive hands are luminous and they are rather bright. The backlight is also good like on most May watches. The resin crystal isn't scratch resistant, yet the appraised case bumps will provide some protection here. Both watches are 50 meters water resistant, which is usual for the Skmay watches. From my experience, it's okay to go swimming, as Skmay watches haven't failed me so far on these occasions. The rubber bands are pretty common for this type of watch. The quality is good, both are very soft and flexible. The size is almost identical, both fit 16 to 22.5 cm size wrists. The blue jeans like texture band of 1586 looks more decent, so standard bands do not fit for a replacement. Pros and cons. Well, can't say much positive about this watch still. Analog time is well readable. The build quality is decent. The blue jeans like texture band looks really nice. Both bands are of good quality. The watches are huge, anyway they would look good on a bigger wrist. The resin crystal will scratch easily, yet the case will provide some protection. Just basic set of functions, lacks a countdown timer and wall time features. 
pretty loud second hand ticking. Confusing and awkward stopwatch control. The year isn't implemented in the calendar. Analog and digital times are unsynchronized. The biggest flaw in my opinion is the method on how the analog time is adjusted. The time can be adjusted only forwards, not backwards. Even worse, it can be accidentally or mistakenly misadjusted by pressing the start button. My expectations were pretty high because of probable analog digital time synchronization, unusual small second hand on the dial, but not this time. If you like a similar looking watch, I'd recommend SKME 1327 or 1155 models instead, even if they use separate digital and analog movements. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, please hit the like and subscribe for more videos. Be safe and see you next time. Bye bye.